This production by Strike Time Dance Theater of Hope College was made possible through funding from the Maxine DeBryan Endowment and in collaboration with the Little Reed Lake Shore. Hello, welcome friends and families. My name is Nikki Flynn of the Hope College Dance Department. Today we aim to share an experience of history through the lens of dance. The work you will see was inspired by Fry Bread, a Native American family story, beautifully illustrated by Juana Martinez Neal and written by Kevin Noble Malliard. We would like to begin today with a land acknowledgement to honor the traditional land of the Peoria, the Potawatomi, the Ottawa, and the Ojibwe peoples. We honor with gratitude the land itself, and we pay respect to our elders, both past and present, as they guide us on remembering our connection to the earth and to the spirits of the ancestors that teach us. We commit to respecting and reconciling a long history of injustice, as well as committing to be better stewards of this land that we inhabit. Thank you so much for joining us today, and please enjoy the presentation. Welcome to Strike Time Dance Theater's episode of Dancing Recipes. Today, not only will you be hanging out in the kitchen, learning about cooking and new recipes, but you also experience ways to create movement and dance recipes that will unlock your creativity and imagination. I'm Brendan. And I'm Kylea. Today, we are going to explore the cooking experience through movement. Can you sizzle? like oil in a pan? Can you wiggle like a cooked spaghetti noodle? Can you pop like a popcorn kernel? We're going to explore different recipes through movement today. Sizzle, wiggle, pop. Can you do it with us? Sizzle, wiggle, pop. Okay. Let's get started with some simple dance recipe movement sentences. A movement sentence is much like a regular sentence. It has a clear beginning, middle, and end, begins in a shape, ends in a shape, and is a combination of two or more action words. An action word allows us to move both in and through the space. Let's use sizzle, wiggle, and pop for our action words. Like this, beginning shape. Can you sizzle from the sky all the way down to the ground? How about we wiggle from side to side like a cooked spaghetti noodle? And let's pop all the way to the sky like a big popcorn kernel. And don't forget to finish it off an ending shape. This is going to be a fun learning experience. I love both food and dancing. There are so many types of recipes. Some might be family recipes or ones you find in a cookbook or magazine or see on TV. Think about some of your favorite recipes. What are some of your favorite things to eat? One of my favorite things to eat is a good old peanut butter and banana sandwich. Peanut butter and banana sandwich? Yeah, let's make some movement sandwiches. Movement sandwiches? No, movement sentences. Oh. But now that we're talking about sandwiches, let's dance through some movement sentences about sandwiches. Now it's time for you to think like a choreographer or dance maker. How about you try creating your own movement sentence to a recipe for a peanut butter and banana sandwich. The recipe calls for spreading the peanut butter, slicing the bananas, 
pressing the bread together and cutting it in half. Let's take a moment and think of the action words. Spread, slice, press, cut. Great, let's do it all together this time. Can you spread from side to side? Can you slice from the high level all the way to the low level? How slow can you press your hands together? And let's try to cut with our arms and our legs. And maybe even our elbows. Awesome job. Let's put it all together to make a movement sentence like this. And don't forget, we need a beginning shape and an ending shape. Here, let me show you my choreography. Beginning shape, spread, slice, press, cut, and ending shape. For a challenge, you might want to play with your movement sentence. Try it in the low level. Can you go faster? Or how slow can you go? Feel free to pause to play with your food movement sentences. Thank you so much for sharing your ideas and choreography with us. Wow, that was fun. Do you have a favorite food? Yes, my favorite food is pasta. Let's take a look at our friend's movement sentences about pasta. Movement sentences, not sandwiches. Pasta. Boil. Drain, slide, salt. Let's add some fruit salad. A fruit salad requires you to peel, slice, Chop, present. Don't forget about dessert and my personal favorite, cookies. When you make cookies, you measure, pour, Mix, scoop, and plop. All of this dancing is making me hungry. Me too. I love seeing how you were able to connect the action words of cooking and baking to the way you move and create with your body. Thanks so much for sharing. I think we're ready to choose a special recipe. Actually, there is this recipe I've been curious about. I've been reading this book, Fry Bread by Kevin Malliard, where they make this delicious looking fry bread. Oh, I love that book. I've been doing some research on the book Fry Bread. I'd love to share some of the things I've learned with you. Hi, Miranda. Please tell us more. Fry bread has a deep tradition in Native American culture. Each tribe or group of people have a different version of this recipe. The one I found in the book by the author is his family's recipe. He's a member of the Seminole Nation tribe. Should we try it? Yeah! All right, now before we get into cooking today, we need to read through our entire recipe. Every time you decide to cook or bake something, you must first read the ingredients list to make sure you have everything you need and then read the recipe through from top to bottom to make sure you know what steps come next. You'll need to understand the directions and be prepared to add ingredients or mix. I am so excited. Can, can I read the ingredients? The ingredients we're working with today are Flour, salt, 
water, cornmeal, baking powder, milk, and sugar. Do we have all our ingredients? Yes. The next step is to read through the recipe. Listen carefully for the action words as Miranda reads through each step. First, boil water. Add cornmeal to boiling water. Reduce the heat. Add cold water. Stir continuously to prevent lumps. Cook until thick. Add yeast and sugar and a few sprinkles of water. Add flour and a whisk. Cover to let rise. Dough should be springy and sticky. Break dough into small portions. Spread, flatten, flip, and drop in the skillet. Wow, that sounds like a very interesting recipe. I can't wait to learn more about fry bread. Absolutely. It makes me think of the good memories I have with my grandma and the family recipes and traditions that she shares with me. It makes me wonder about the history and tradition of fry bread. For many, fry bread links generation with generation and also connects the present with the painful history of the Native Americans. Although fry bread has become traditional in many Navajo tribes, we know it is not indigenous to the culture. Fry bread came to be when the U.S. government moved tribes off of their native land. Native Americans were no longer able to hunt, farm, or forage for fruits and vegetables. Instead, they were given rations or portions of flour, salt, and lard from the U.S. government. These were ingredients they had no idea how to use or even read in English. It was the Navajo women that used these ingredients to create fry bread. In the story Fry Bread, there are two ants who compete for the Fry Bread Lady title. In the author's family, Aunt Fanny won the title for her culinary, scientific, and best tasting fry bread. Eventually, the author learned how to make fry bread himself, and after long, messy learning moments, he became his family's keeper of the recipe. It is important to know the history and significance of certain foods before we make them. Thanks so much for sharing and connecting the story of tradition. Now, are you ready to see some movement sentences about fry bread? We are too. Watch this. Step one, boil water. Step two, add cornmeal to boiling water. Step three, reduce the heat. Step four, add cold water. Step five, stir continuously to prevent lumps. Step six, cook until thick. Step seven, add yeast and sugar. And a few sprinkles of water. Step eight, add flour and whisk.
Step nine, cover to let rise. Step 10, dough should be springy and sticky. Step 11, heat up the iron skillet. Step 12, break dough into small portions. Spread, flatten, flip, drop into skillet. Spread, flatten, flip, drop into skillet. Spread, flatten, flip, drop into skillet. Wow, that was so interesting, wasn't it? I love the part where the dancers were making balls of dough with their body. They were flipping and spreading and stretching. It makes me think how I would move if I were a big ball of dough. Spreading, flattening, flipping. Can you do that with me? Wow, how fun. No two dough balls are the same. Some flatter than others, some softer. Just like people, there is not one shape, body type, or shoe size that is better than another. For fry bread, it is the same. The most important thing to remember is having fun and learning how to make something special with the people that you love. That's right. We are so happy you got to stop by today to talk about fry bread and talk through how to make it and the significance it has in Native American culture. We hoped you learned something and enjoyed exploring something new with us. We know that food connects us. Preparing food and eating are often traditions that bring us together. In many cultures, passing down family traditions is a way to pass down experience and skills to the next generation. Thanks so much for learning some movement sandwiches. Sentences. <sighs> Please keep on reading, dancing, and creating. And it's also important to learn about history and traditions that are different than our own. Remember, we can celebrate our similarities and differences because together, they are what makes us all human. Thanks for learning with us today.